Hi friends, I want to say right away that this video is for informational purposes only. The circuit presented in it, although they are fully functional, are practically not used in real situations, with the exception of rare cases. The first rectifier diodes were invented before the first transistors. In addition to their direct purpose, that is, rectifying alternating current, diodes were used as a detector in receivers. The first diodes were made on the basis of germanium crystal. Now they are completely replaced by silicon rectifier diodes. Once in the past, when I was just starting to study electronics, I wondered what can be done on the basis of usual diodes besides any rectifiers. I think the answer to this question will interest in particular beginners. After all, it was just such simple experiments that awakened in many of us a love for the world of electronics. Let's get one thing clear. In this video, I will try to overview designs and experiences that require only diodes without auxiliary electronic components. It's well known that a diode conducts current well in one direction and hardly conducts in the other. The connection in which the diode conducts current is called direct. We also know that when current passes through a diode, a certain voltage drop is formed at its PN transition. This drop depends on the type of diode. For example, for common silicon rectifier diodes, this drop is 0.5 to 0.7 volts. For Schottky diodes, 0.1 to 0.2 volts. That is, if we apply to the anode of the diode a plus from the battery, which has a voltage of 12 volts, then relative to the cathode and minus of the battery, we will get a voltage of about 11.3 volts. That is, we lost 0.6 to 0.7 volts on the diode. How can this properly be used? Here is a simple circuit that consists of diodes connected in series. It can provide 5 volts at the output for charging, for example, a mobile phone from a 12-volt car electrical system. In fact, this is a simple voltage converter 12 to 5 volts, which is built on only diodes. At each diode, we get a voltage drop. As a result, the voltage at the output will be lower. Do you want your homemade products to be the same as the factory ones? Then you need high-quality printed circuit boards, which PCBWay will produce for you at affordable prices. Just download the source Gerber files from the company's website, select the options you need, pay for the order, and soon your boards will be ready. The complexity, number of layers, and board sizes can be anything. PCBWay often holds contests and sweepstakes. Follow the news to keep track of the events. We were personally convinced of the quality. Try it too. The link is in the description. In fairness, it should be noted that this voltage will depend on the current flowing through the diode and on the type of diode. It should also be noted in mind that depending on the current flowing through the diode, the latter will heat up. The greater the current, the greater the heating. As already mentioned, the output current of such a circuit depends on the current of the diodes used. If the connected load draws more current than your diodes allow, they can simply burn out. This disadvantage of the circuit is the fact that when all diodes are broken through, at the output of the circuit we will have the same voltage as at the input, and the connected load may fail. Despite this, in my practice, I have seen at least three industrial chargers from cigarette lighter socket, which were built exactly on this principle. I don't advise to use this circuit for serious matters, but for all sorts of low-power consumers, it is acceptable. If you haven't got a 10 normal voltage stabilizers, like the 7805. For a long time, I have had a couple of packages of such wonderful LEDs from a well-known manufacturer. LEDs made in Japan, the original ones, and it's quite difficult to get now. In general, I was sorry to use them in some projects, and they lay idle for about a year. And today, I found for them the most worthless use that you can think of. LEDs are red, 5 mm. LED is also a kind of diet, only the voltage drop across them is greater than on conventional rectifier diet. Also, when current passes, they emit light. For many of you, it is probably not a secret that the reverse process is also possible. When illuminating a LED crystal, it can generate electricity like a common solar cell. 
That is, the LED can work as a photovoltaic converter. The value of the output voltage and current depends solely on the LED type. Experimenting with different LEDs, I accidentally discovered that the mentioned red diodes, given their size, produce the highest current. In bright sunlight, one LED provides a voltage of up to 1.5 volts, while the current can reach 300 microamps. True. This is only in very bright light, but in December at noon, I managed to get no more than 30 microamps. Honestly, I must note that this isn't the rated current, but the short circuit current. For greater clarity, it was decided to assemble a small solar battery of 100 LEDs. I connected 50 pieces in parallel to increase the total current. Then I connected these assemblies of 50 parallel LEDs in series to increase the total voltage. According to my calculations, such LED battery is enough to light up at least one LED. The circuit board was hastily drawn and etched. The LEDs must be positioned as close as possible. Let me remind you that the video is made at the shortest days of December. The sun's rays are too weak. The maximum voltage I have been able to get is about 2.8 volts with a short circuit current of about 60 microamps. To discover the full potential of the battery, I took a hellishly powerful half kilowatt LED matrix with a driver and turned it on. Cool lighting. You can't look at such a miracle without proper eye protection. You can easily go blind temporarily. The LED battery without load produces a voltage of about 3.1 volts at a distance of 10 cm from the lighting source. The short circuit current reaches 15 mA, which is very good. The bright white LED glows very well from our battery. In normal daylight, in this case, it is imitated by a 10 watt flashlight. The LED also shines, though not so brightly. Of course, the efficiency of such a LED solar battery is much lower than that of a classical one. Also, they are very critical to the angle of insulation, so such solar cells have no practical sense. But on the other hand, they can be successfully used for their intended purpose as a light source, for example, in all kinds of color, music installations, and stroboscopes. The third construction is a kind of closed circle. It consists of several diodes and one LED. Despite its primitiveness, it can help in the detection of high-frequency signals that can be emitted by all kinds of powerful transmitters. That is, the circuit is an RF detector or a field detector. I recommend assembling it on the basis of germanium detector diodes. But if you don't have them, also will work cheap, affordable and fairly fast diodes like 1N4148. Such a simple RF detector will help you understand whether your walkie-talkie or transmitter is working and also estimate the uh, approximate radiation danger of a device. I advise you to take a red LED 3 or 5 mm and more is possible. The number of diodes connected in series is from 4 pieces, but if you have fine specialized microwave diodes, then you can use only one. It is important to note that Common rectifier diodes will not work here. The design can be installed in a small box and filled with epoxy resin, getting a compact keychain detector. The disadvantages include low sensitivity. Among advantages are simplicity and low cost of components, an eternal thing that doesn't require maintenance and power source for operation. On this, it's time to finish the video. How useful it was, it's up to you to judge. I remind you that all the necessary links are in the description. Now, I say goodbye. Until we meet again, with you was Kassian TV.